I just want to start off today by saying Happy Mother's Day. Everybody has a mother. Everybody knows someone that cares for them. So go out there and wish them Happy Mother's Day or at least give them a call and let, tell them how special they are to you. Today's video, it's all about B-roll. Do you have the will? Do you have the power? Do you have the flow? Do you have the creativity? And most of all, do you want to do it? Because if so, you can get it done real easy without having an Edelchrome, a Rhino, or any other brand that are over $800, $1,000 at hand. All you need right now is just an arm like this and a glider. And by that, I mean this. This guy here, under $30 I believe. Everything I've created today, I have rigged up even that stand back there to be my boom arm for the things I've done. So if you have at least 100 bucks at hand and you want to be creative, today's the day to take notes. Let's get into it. Before we get into how can we capture the best scene, we have to make sure that we have a very clean sensor. I've been noticing dust on my sensor and on my images. Let's try to clean that. I have this guys here, which I got actually some time ago. If you're changing lenses, you need to clean your sensor at least once a month, I would say. The only thing we're gonna do right now is open the front. We don't have to lift the mirror because there's no mirror. This is a mirrorless camera. This is a full frame sensor cleaning swab. Eclipse makes one that I used to use before. Don't know what's available right now, but I'll look into some stuff and I'll have the description in the links below. So let's clean our sensor. The swab comes in like this. All you do is just pull it out and it's already pre-damped with alcohol or whatever it is, the solution that they put in. All you do is swipe it back and forth one or twice and that's it. And it's a full size of the sensor. So when you put it in, you just squeeze one end, lift, and the other end. And that's how you do it. That's all it takes. Then put the cap back on. So that's how you clean your sensor. It's very simple. If you have F-mount lenses, this is what you need exactly. And this is the reason why I always recommend for you to have a cage on your, on your system. So first, you're going to need this cage, right? As you guys, I've shown you guys before, this is my um, small rig cage. And all you do is just put it in here like this. And you mount on the screws, right? Quarter so handy. So we have our cage mounted on now. And we're ready to go on to our next step. The next step is to put on the F2Z adapter. The F2Z adapter, you take out the back side. And you just mount it on right except you have this issue this level difference of the f-mount being taller or shorter than the bottom of the cage and for that whether you have the cage or not that's always going to be the problem because if this is not taller the body itself is shorter so when you're trying to mount this onto a tripod it's kind of complicated unless you mount it directly onto this but that puts all the weight on an adapter that's in between two things, a lens and the body. So for that reason, I highly recommend as well this little adapter here that I purchased and you just put it on there to level the bottom. Your regular tripod adapter right here and mount it without an issue. As you can see, it doesn't wobble no more. It's flush, it's solid. Whatever mount you wanna put on it, it can go directly on it without a problem. Okay, now that you have that in place, now we can actually set our F-mount our glass without a problem. And it goes in like this, right? Since the backside now it's a lot heavier, whether you're using this or any other heavier lens, it would usually stay on balance like this the whole time. When we use the F to Z adapter by itself, it usually has to balance itself on it and it usually wobbles forward or backwards, but with this, it doesn't. It's stable and you can put anything you want on it. But if you want to make your life easier, I would get myself also another adapter like this. These are called NATO adapters. And you just mount it on top like this. So you can just slide anything you want on it. So the Ninja 5 was mounted right there. And now I'm just going to mount this. If you do not want to mount a Ninja 5 on top, you can always use a handle, which I have around here. And this handle, you just put it on. You can just set it to what it is and you just mount it on directly. I'll screw it up a little bit and slice right in. 
And now you have a handy cam like this without an issue. You can carry it just like this the whole time. I usually use this handle though for something else. I usually use it as a protector, a way to secure that my hand does not get in the way of HDMI cable. The cables are always here, so when you're on the go and you're shooting like this the whole time, the pressure of your palm sometimes touches the cable itself and you're putting a lot of pressure there bending it. So what I do is use this as a protector so I can just put it on here and I use it like this. So now I, my hand actually rests right there the whole time. And when I'm done, even I can, I can still use the Ninja 5 on top and I can just carry it like this. See, it makes sometimes stupid adjustments like that makes sense and to me it actually does all the inputs get protected from me actually touching it and bending it or whatever it may be and it makes it a little more stable as well the ninja 5 i usually put a cage on it if you want to look at it let's sw swing this thing here that's where we are with the ninja 5 i have a cage on it and i can mount anything i want i think these are called 3 8 and these are 1 4s there's a whole bunch of different ones you can use all over all around I'm using the DA10 to record on this directly so I can get ProRes out of this system. Now we can actually start using this any which way you want because now it can mount anywhere. So let me just take this thing off so I can make it a little lighter. See the good thing about it is that everything is detachable. I never wanted to show you guys because I thought it was dumb. But after thinking about it, I was like, why not? It's very inexpensive. And I've used it in the past too, uh, especially in one of some of my first videos. This thing right here comes just without this. It comes with a, you know, that screw here. See, the good thing about this thing is that it locks anywhere you want it. And then you can, it can be kind of as a lever so you can unscrew, see? You can, it'll help you unscrew itself. This little skate here is very cool. It has degrees here as well, so you can actually turn it with this and this and adjust the wheels any angle you want. So you can turn, make this thing go anywhere you want. You just want to turn the front, move it that way, and it'll just turn like this. You want the whole thing, you see? How versatile it is, you can't beat that. Most of the time, all, all the glide cams, I mean all the sliders, they can only do this. That's all, back and forth. One way or another, maybe the camera can sway, but that's still with an extra adapter that you need to buy separately. Yet, in the end, you're spending over $1,000 just for that and just for that minimal amount of productivity that you can get done with it. Here, you, it's more versatile and you can do a lot more. It's perhaps your best friend on the go. And look how small it is. You can take it apart 100% and just put it in your bag. The next thing you'll need is this arm here from Small Rig. There's other brands that make it too, but I've been sticking to this brand because I like everything they have. And they have smaller versions of this as well. I think this is the largest one. I think this is an 11. This is funny. I had no clue how to make these things tight at all. I was fuzzing with it for an hour. I was like, how's that? And then like this thing was still rotating everything. But the tighter you turn this knob here, everything gets locked. You lock one thing, everything gets locked in place in one way. You let it go. You can then you can start turning this. You can even swing it any way you want to. You know, it has mobility. So I love this arm. So for that reason, I bought two. How strong they are, you can't beat it. It supports the Z6 without a problem. I can mount it on this. And it comes with this adapter too, with the double threaded side. So let's just keep it like that. Let's tighten it up here. I usually this is how I tighten it up. So I find that groove that's right here, and then I make it go down on, at a 90. And then I tighten everything. And then I just go at it a couple of different times so make sure it's completely tight. Once it's tight, then you don't have to worry about this thing getting loose because everything else happens from above. So here now, I can actually mount the Z6. You would think this would not hold it, but it does. It holds it right. You also want to be smart. You want to be able to distribute the weight now, if we turn the wheels like I just did again, now you can make it do whatever you want. So you can just make it spin in its place. How cool is that? You can't do that with a slider. That's so freaking cool. And that's just with this little device here. It's very steady. It doesn't really jump or nothing. It's got really good, good bearings to go horizontal, but now we need to go vertical. And for that, we need a boom arm that we can rig up and fix the way we want to. So let's set up a string 
And in this case right here that you see in the picture, I set up the string directly to the hot shoe. This setup is very easy to create. So just use anything that you have at hand. And the one other thing is that make sure you're locking your camera securely very well because it's hanging down and then it has more weight attached to it. I think this one's probably the one you're gonna like the most. It's better if you use the arm adapter from small rig to counterweight things more so that in case your balancing weight is too much, you can adjust it and move it around a lot easier. It's also easier if your counterweight is on a pulley. As long as it can swing, your camera will probably always be aimed in the right direction. And then use your arms to move the boom arm up and down while looking at your external monitor to make sure that you're actually focusing where you need to go. So what do you guys think? If we ignore the cage and we just focus on these two items here and maybe the swabs to get you started this is i think about twenty dollars so forty dollars thirty dollars a hundred and ten dollars oh, and the swabs are another twenty dollars so 150 bucks let's say and you get all these items here and you're ready to do your b-roll with a very steady cam i do not think that everybody should be spending over a thousand dollars to create especially right now I'm pretty sure most of those guys are out there promoting all this big item stuff, get most of those items for free themselves. I would really love those items, honestly, you know, but I'm not willing to cough up another $2,000. I just don't believe in that right now. Although if I get it for free, I'll freaking take it. Anyways, that's the end of my show today. Like I said earlier, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And please spend some time with your family as well. Take care of everyone equally. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, just like before, leave me a comment and let me know what is it that I did wrong. How, guide me. Thank you again. And I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, 5 p.m. for day 11. See you.